When I first started my career, I thought endless hustle was the only way up the ladder. So that's what I committed on doing, working as hard as I could on as many things I thought were relevant to move fast. And it worked for a little while, but it then started to hurt me more than helping me. In fact, it took me one decade to realize that this was a surefire way of burning out and not reaching my full potential. It took me years to finally found four non-obvious performance skills that I believe are crucial in today's world. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is and how you can learn them fast. Welcome back. My name is Don Castillo, founder of Self Master. We help entrepreneurs scale with peak clarity, focus, consistency, and self-belief by training them in peak performance. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of the juicy videos we publish every single week. Now, these skills are non-obvious. Most likely you haven't heard of them before, but in my view, they truly are crucial. I believe number two is the one that has had the biggest impact on my life. It might very well be the most important, but I really want to learn what are your thoughts on it. So comment below, what do you think? Now, skill number one is selective attention. We live in a distracted world. We had a zillion inputs coming into our consciousness and distracting us. And selective attention is the skill of having control of your awareness and eventually your attention and directing it to only the things that matter most. Those that can train their minds to avoid distractions end up accessing deep states of work and flow states much more easily. This is a skill that is trained through mindfulness and meditation by having the opportunity to sit in an empty room and force your mind to stay calm and collected. As you train this skill, you start seeing how the baseline for distraction lowers and you are much more able to enter deep states of focus. Selective attention in essence implies a rewiring of the brain because you have to retrain it to not secrete as much dopamine every time you are hit by a stimulus. With the clients that we work with, most of them come to us and they're spending about between four and five hours on their smartphones every single day, which makes them frantic and really incapable of accessing deep states of work. So one of the first thing that we do is we run analysis on their brain to understand how much of this skill are they able to train, right? So selective attention, your ability to direct your mind towards the inputs that matter to your mission, that are uniquely yours, that only matter to you. 99.99 .99 of things that you would see in a shorts feed or on TikTok or on Twitter do not matter. And your ability to discriminate, ignore what doesn't matter and focus on what does truly is a core skill in today's day and age. Skill number two, and to me, this has been the most important, is psychological flexibility. This is very linked to selective attention. So psychological flexibility is having the ability to understand your thoughts and your emotions of something that is not you and then gauge their usefulness. So you can change your mind quickly if what you think or believe about a situation is not conducive to better performance and results. This is a core skill of elite performers because if you are hard jump on one way of looking at life, if you get mad every time things do not go your way, or you don't know how to react effectively when you are negatively surprised by something that happens to you, you get stuck and you make bad decisions. So psychological flexibility is a very important skill that allows you to choose what is the right thought and emotion for every situation. Some people call this mental jiu-jitsu is the ability to not react but instead pause understand what the emotion and the thought are telling you these thoughts and emotions that are automatic they just pop into your mind instead of you believing in them you just look at them understand what do they actually mean what are they trying to tell you and you only pay attention to them in other words you only believe in them if they are useful in that situation. So for instance, in the past, before I really learned and got good at this, 
every time something went bad, I failed, I would start thinking, you're just not good enough, things are not going to work out, this is just not for you. All sorts of bullshit that my mind was throwing at me based on my past programming. So while I started being better at psychological flexibility, I could just realize that this was going on, that I had a saying and a choice in whether I wanted to pay attention to them or not. So every time I got hit by it, you're not good enough, I could easily identify that thought as something negative that let nowhere let go of that thought and instead find evidence that I was indeed good enough and this bad result that was not affecting me was just something that didn't prove anything about me. It's just things haven't gone the way I want it, right? So once you take control of your attention and you choose what is the inputs of your consciousness that really matter, step number two or the second big skill is choosing your best response. So you do not react, but instead of you proactively move forward with the thought and emotion that is most useful to you at that moment. If you're seeing any value from this video, consider like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the juicy videos. Then step number three, and this one is huge, is nervous system regulations. As I always say, you have a body and you have a mind, right? And the mind is very powerful, but it cannot totally override your body. If your body is not primed for peak performance, you're constantly stressed out, exhausted, you know, your nervous system is out of whack, you will not be able to keep calm, collected, and in control. So you need to find a perfect balance for your nervous system. And what does perfect balance mean? It means the balance between the rest and digest response and the fight, freeze, or flight response in between the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. A good measure of this is something called HRV, heart rate variability. Let's call it the degree of balance between the stress response and the relaxation response. In the past, I worked super hard Heart. I was permanently stressed. I was having between four and six coffees every single day. I was young back then, I was like 27, 28, so I could actually handle it, but my stress was terrible. When I got to the weekend, I was totally destroyed. So I had to fully rest and recover in the weekend and I started the week really at half gas. So I was never really fully focused and fully rested and fully energetic. And as a result, I made a few mistakes, right? You know, I, maybe I, I sometimes I didn't handle my emotions in a meeting or maybe I made the wrong investment um, decision. All sorts of things that is stemmed from not being able to regulate my nervous system. So what did I do? Well, I researched the hell out of this and I eventually settled for core practices that helped me regulate that nervous system, among which meditation. I always talk about this. To me, it's more like a spiritual protocol because it allows you to control your mind, but it also have great effects on your nervous system and it helps reduce anxiety by reducing the size of the amygdala, which is the fear center of the brain. Also cold shower, strategic cold showers, especially in times in which my stress level was super high. Also start doing forced baths. So at the end of my workday, and that could even be 11 or midnight, right? I was in private equity. I would take a walk outside of my office or outside of my house. Sometimes I will not even could go to a forest or to a garden, but I will try to take a walk to remove the stress through walking, supremely important. And for a short period, I also experimented with heat therapy, with sauna and Turkish bath, because I read the research that showed how that helped also remove stress very quickly. And finally, the best practice that I probably started and I still do is breath work, specifically heart rate variability training that helps me tune my nervous system to find peace and relaxation, even under extreme stress. Breath work really is the key towards being calm, collected and in control every single day. And finally, the fourth skill, which now is very popular is flow states. Flow state is a non-ordinary state of consciousness in which you feel your best and perform your best. You can only access that once you have created the right conditions in your environment and are tackling a task that is slightly outside of the current level of your abilities that triggers that 
flow state. It's not an on off switch. A flow state is a state, right? It's not a task. It's not something you do. It is a state in which you perform things. This is a very important distinction because there's a lot of people selling flow state as something you can just switch off or switch on, but that is not how it works. According to the leader scientist on flow, which is Mihaly Se Mihaly, who recently passed away, we don't have clarity on how flow states are generated in the brain, but we more or less understand what are the preconditions for it to emerge, which, as I said, has to do with tackling the right task with the right intensity for long enough until you get that flow state. If you don't try hard enough, you get bored. If you try too hard, you get anxious. It's all about mastering that Goldilocks, understanding how to stay, as he called it, flow channel how to really make sure that you don't get bored and you don't get anxious those four skills really helped me move up the ladder super quickly as you probably know by now i was able to go from architect to private equity director in 30 months instead of 15 years which is what it normally takes here in spain i started working super hard but then i started strategically implementing all of these protocols and learning all of these skills to make sure that i could climb up the ladder without burning out. So I highly encourage you to start applying them because they make all the difference. These days, those that can really choose what they pay attention to, choose what thoughts actually matter, that can regulate their nervous system so they have stress under control and can access flow states every single day will win. It's not a matter of IQ, talent, capital, connection. All of those things are helpful but the truly thing that matters is performance. And these four non-obvious performance skills truly made the difference for me. And based on our research and based on six years training founders and entrepreneurs, it also helps a lot to the people that we help. If you want our proven protocol and master you know, yourself in 12 weeks and master yourself spiritually, mentally, physically, and executive wise, so you can scale fast, book a call with us. We'll be happy to see if we can indeed helpful. And in the meantime, check this video because it's going to dive deeper into these skills and how you can implement them in your own life. Until next time, onwards.